Sometimes the art is great. Sometimes the artist is established. Sometimes from the outset, a project looks like it's going to succeed. And then afterwards, it just flops. Now, what I'm talking about is the idea that an established artist or an established person or someone big that looks like they've got all the credentials will be able to make a project succeed. But when it comes down to it, the NFT space is kind of fickle and um, it's less about the art and it starts to turn into more of a business. Now, the reason this comes up is that someone in my Discord, Space Slave, he actually wanted to kind of um, have a bit of a chat about how um, established artists and sometimes these big crazy projects that have this hype and this build up from the outset just don't succeed and continue on afterwards and they don't kind of hold up their end of the bargain and he he was quite honest and humble and he didn't want to actually single out any projects and he just wanted to kind of almost go uh what my thoughts were when it comes down to this and a cautionary tale when it comes down to people that are new to the space and do see something crazy now when it comes down to it what happens with a project is on the run up, you've got all this promotional material, you've got these big pushes that um, artists will make. And an easy way to kind of see if a project would be worthy is have they completed a successful project before? If they haven't completed a successful project, do they have an audience or have they completed something in that art space before? And if they have, it's usually a really good sign. It's a green flag. And the reason it's a green flag is that you would rather go with someone that you can see that's done something before over um, an anonymous sort of uh, avatar, a JPEG essentially. So essentially that is like the first kind of indication that you should be looking at a project because they're established and they're not anonymous, they're doxxed. Now what ends up happening is the thing about the NFT space as opposed to just other art spaces or just other business spaces in general is that the NFT space is a super micro IPO, you're essentially taking a project and breaking it down to give out 10,000 shareholders, 10,000 shares. Now people can buy up more shares, etc. But then what happens is that there is a liquid market. So this project will fluctuate up and down. And where this gets a little bit hard is that people that aren't really deep in the NFT space or understand this, they don't realize that when you make an NFT, you're not necessarily selling art, what you're doing is you're almost doing uh, an IPO and getting 10,000 stakeholders on to you as like the uh, figure when it comes down to the project. And what this leads to is it leads to a lot of noise and a lot of chaos because when you've got 10,000 equal shareholders kind of saying, oh, this is good, why aren't we doing this and trying to push the needle, there's a lot of noise and it starts to build a bit of an echo chamber. And then what happens is the echo chamber can then uh, start to pull down the floor price, which then drops essentially the value of the project. And then people can start kind of laddering in and uh, it starts to drop the value of the project. And the people that do see long-term potential with it are started to kind of be shaken by those prices. And what happens is that if the uh, person behind the project isn't actually pushing through and pushing forward and delivering the value that the stakeholders want to see, the hesitation comes in with everyone else wanting to actually uh, reinvest in the project and kind of buy up the floor and kind of move it forward. And what this really does is it pulls down the confidence of the project. So the reason for that breakdown is that when you are looking at a project that has an established artist or an established person behind it have they had stakeholders before do they know how to kind of command an audience and kind of shape the narrative to actually execute on the project and not just necessarily execute but execute the narrative to ensure that people are along for the ride because when you are going into a project with an established artist if they haven't actually had those stakeholders before and they haven't actually run a business like that before, then you could be in danger. Now, I'm not saying that this will happen. There can be support crew and support teams around it. But when someone is used to creating a piece, putting it out, and then not having to be accountable after the um, piece has gone out, that could be a red flag. Um, and like I said, not all projects are gonna be like this. There will be support, support crews and support teams. But that is just uh, an aspect that you should be aware of when it comes down to it. Because a green flag is usually someone that's established 
establish someone that's done it before. But if they are an artist or they have done it before, have they done it before in a way where they're taking accountability for the stakeholders when it comes down to the project. I know these words sound a little bit esoterical. I know these words sound a little bit sort of highbrow business um, terms, but these are terms that you should uh, come to familiarize yourself with because when it comes down to this space, if you do want to uh, make some money on it, you need to think about the psychology and the mechanics behind a project. You are one shareholder when it comes down to the project and your success is based off the 9,999 shareholders in it. The CEO of the project, the person who has sold that NFT, they're the ones that need to speak to the board, that need to speak to the shareholders and make sure that everyone's on board and really pull this up. Now, hindsight is always 2020. You will move into a project, it won't run as good afterwards, and you'll say, hey, what happened? And you'll be able to pick it apart and look at those aspects on why the project didn't succeed in the beginning, but it's very hard to do that when you're kind of looking at it from the front when they are doing that promo run because when people are doing this promo run, they're engaging a lot, they're putting out a lot more, um, the chats are going wild, and it's very easy to kind of get caught up in the hype. And if you dismiss all of them, you're gonna miss out on some really good buys, and if you buy into all of them, you're then going to lose them. So overall, this is just um, some thoughts when it comes down to uh, established people within this space putting things out, be it artists, business people, uh, etc. Do they actually know how to actually run a business, have some stakeholders, and ensure that there is some momentum being built after the project launches. Hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.